Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Medi Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea and let's chat about what is happening in the stars and the sky today. I got to tell you something this morning. It was so beautiful. I woke up at 447. 447. Good God. I woke up. I sat up because I saw like this light shining outside my window. And when I looked out, it was the crescent moon, of course, rising just before the sun. Because as we, as you know, we're heading into the new moon. So the moon and the sun are coming ever closer together and before the, the moon disappears into the, the shine of, of the sun. So right now in the morning, the moon is rising just about an hour and a half, maybe, or an hour uh, before the sun is today. Now, tomorrow it'll be that much closer. But uh, this morning, it was so beautiful and just just inspiring, right? So then I get back in bed and uh, try to go back to sleep, which I can't. So I've been up now since about five o'clock this morning and still just now found myself in the bathroom going, oh my God, I, uh, it's three minutes till I don't have time to dry my hair, throw it up and come on live. So it's kind of funny. And when I woke up this morning, I was actually feeling, and you guys may be feeling some of this too, that, that revving up feeling in your stomach. If you're emotionally defined, you may be tapping into some of this emotional energy that's building. Um, you may be feeling it through your Mars, which Mars sometimes builds up energy. Today is the day where Mars and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mars and Uranus come together in a trine, and that may be making the butterflies, you know, the inner nerves going. Uh, so it isn't a bad day at all. It just is a day that's energetic and is possibly going to work out in a couple of different ways. So we'll want to take care and see where it is that we can uh, make some moves today in our world. So let's say good morning to everybody. I see uh, Rebecca and Mimi joined us. And earlier I saw somebody else and I'm sorry, I've missed you. Good morning, Mimi says. Good morning or greetings, Rebecca. Good morning, Susan Glavin. Good morning, Colleen. And um, <laughs> thank you, sweetie. Um, it's beautiful to see you all here. So let's talk about what is really happening today. We actually have a bit to talk about because so much, it seems, is coming into this crescendo feeling. You kind of feel like you're being squeezed to a point. Um, and that means things are sort of building up and to what end, right? Let's see if we can't divine where it is that we are being pushed to. So today the moon is in Leo. It moved in last evening uh, for us here on the West Coast. It was late, late in the afternoon. And now we are sitting in a Leo moon that to me just makes me think about where all of the planets have been over the course of the summer, the inner planets, right? The sun, the moon, the uh, Mercury and Venus and Mars, they've all been in Leo over the course of the summer. And now we have the last moon cycle of Leo before we end up in the new moon of Virgo, where literally then the whole of the energy moves over into the Virgo type of expression. So what is it that we are doing now while the moon today and tomorrow are in the last vestiges, let's say, of that Leo energy? Well, I would say it is time for us to integrate everything that we've learned over the course of the summer. Now, remember, all of this began back July 2nd when we began the Mercury uh, retrograde. And it was at four degrees of Leo, and then it went backwards to Cancer. And then as the month moved on, we ended up with more and more planets moving into uh, Leo until finally the sun at the end of July moves into Leo, well, 22nd, 23rd. And then we end up with a lot of Leo energy eventually giving way to Virgo. Now, this is a round of energy that happens every year. So it's not that that's what's so new, but it is interesting to see so many planets lined up together, moving from sign to sign. And they're all the personal planets, which means they all affect you personally somewhere, wherever you have Virgo and Leo in your astrology charts. Now, let me just say, if you don't know your astrology chart, you can go to my website at www.living-astrology.com and you can request a new 
human design chart or a new astrology chart, either one. If you find you need them, I, I think you should, everybody should have them. You should be coming here in the morning. This is just me. You should be coming here in the morning with your two charts in hand, ready to compare what's going on in your chart to what I'm telling you about is going on in the stars above. And if you need that, you can check out the website and get that information. Now, I something interesting is happening today, too, with the moon, and that is literally it just moved into Leo yesterday late in the day, and it is going to turn void, of course, today, again, already at 5.07 my time. So that would be 8.07 for you all on the East Coast. And it stays in that void until tomorrow afternoon at 4.57 p.m. my time. Uh, a 7.57 p.m. for you all on the East Coast. So nearly a 24-hour void of course moon. And what does that mean? Well, a void of course moon means there are no new connections between the moon and any planets or points uh, until it makes its next sign change. And that occurs, of course, when it moves into Virgo tomorrow at 4.57 p.m. But literally from this afternoon until late tomorrow afternoon, which encompasses all of the workday tomorrow, we are in that void, of course, moon. And so when I think about this in relation to the setup now for the new moon, which happens to be, by the way, a super moon, right? A super moon, meaning the moon is coming within 90% of the closest approach it ever makes to the earth, which means it looks bigger if, if we could see it. <laughs> we can't see the new moon, so we won't see it. But trust me when I say it has more impact when it is a super moon. And that's because it affects the tidal flow on the planet more than it does usually. And because our bodies are made up of mostly fluids, it affects us as well. So expect to have some impact coming from this new moon. And there are completely many other reasons why that is the case as well. But for one thing, it is a super moon. Now, what do we do then in this void of course moon? Well, I think I've already led you sort of to that idea of integration. So I would spend the time between today, this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon uh, in maybe a, a meditative sort of state or in a contemplation of where you've been and where do you want to go, right? Where are you being led to go? And what have you learned over the intervening uh, couple of weeks, several weeks actually, and what's left to do, right? What do you have, what haven't you gone and done very well or uh, what stands out to you as what's left for you to do? And also because you don't wanna just be beating yourself up, be looking at what did you do really well and what worked out really well and what do you want more of? right? So it is a contemplation time. It is a time to do some self-evaluation, to look at all of the things that have gone on this summer and what is it leading you to, right? There's got to, there's likely a pattern that is emer has emerged or is emerging in your awareness about where it is you're meant to go, who it is that you're meant to be with, uh, what projects you're meant to be putting your energy into, etc. So great time for that. Now, the moon in before 4.57 or before 5.07 this afternoon, my time, is going to square Uranus and trine Jupiter. So the moon in Leo, so we're thinking fire here, right? Fire to an, uh, in a square to a planet that is about awakening, but it is in an Earth sign. It wants practical um, uh, expression of its energies. The moon in Leo is creative, it's passion, it is uh, powerful, it's courageous. So courage is going to come up a couple of different times here today in our chat. And having the courage to awaken. The moon is triggering our courage, our risk-taking ability, in a way that is, um, I, I, I use the words a little bit later and I'm going to use them now because it works, calculated risks, right? Calculated risks where we look out at our lives and we see where it is that we can make some change or have some impact. And we, we say that the risk is worth it, right? That it isn't, we're not putting so much out there that we're going to lose big, but we are calculating in our minds that if I don't take the risk, then I'm not going to gain the reward. So risk and reward in 
in a balance sort of ideal. Uh, so, and with Jupiter in the mix today, the Jupiter is in fellow fire sign Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is a sign ruled by Jupiter. So Jupiter has probably more power as a planet today than uh, than it normally does, uh, or has been having anyway, as we've shifted into Earth, the fire signs are sort of, you know, waning in their uh, influence. But today, Jupiter has a lot of effect. And that effect should be to have optimism, to see the bigger picture, to see how, huh, maybe see the growth pattern of what's been going on for you, whether it's been comfortable or not, doesn't really matter. Because I know some of you have had some, ha have had a, a lot going on this summer, uh, but it's possible now to see how it is everything fits together. And Jupiter might help you be able to step back and look back in and see things from the bigger perspective and not just from the more limited perspective of, oh, woe is me, or oh, no, I keep going through these same things over and over again. Uh, so we have really good energy set up for us with the moon. You just don't want to forget that all day tomorrow, literally, we're in that void of course. So if you have something that you want to start, a project that you really need to have some, you know, wits about you, get it done today so that tomorrow you can be in that flow of that, that uh, more lazy energy, if you will. All right, let's take a look at who else has joined us. Debbie Tibbetts, good morning to you. And Christine Erickson, good morning. Latricia, good morning. And Christine Erickson says it's 17.04 p.m. here, and I'm guessing that's because you are in Sweden, I believe it is. Uh, uh, Suzanne, good morning. Linda Dennis, good morning. Lisa Kenny says it's muggy and foggy here in Monterey's coast. Yeah. So we've had some really beautiful weather. August is typically late August and early September are typically the best weeks here in the Pacific Northwest. And it has been just gorgeous here, beautiful sunshine, but the, the sun having moved a little further south isn't as intense. We have some wind blowing. It has just been like, wow, I just wanted to spend all day yesterday outside. Oh, just right on yourself. No problem. Um, and uh, I feel bad for people that are in the mugginess because that just feels so oppressive. And I, I know, I know how that could be. I grew up in Southern California and I remember those days when it would just be almost oppressive feeling. Good morning, Susan Bronlin. It's great to see you here. And she said, that happened to me this morning when I realized how much I manifested in this new opening pathway. It is pretty amazing what has transpired for all of us. And, you know, because we want to focus now on what's possible and the, the, the positive expression of everything, um, the more that we can look and see how far we've come, the, the more we can say, okay, I am embracing this new energy and I am willing to do what it takes to move forward. And I am willing to let go of all of that crap in the past. I'm willing to leave it back there. Right? Leave it in the past and move forward into the future, open-armed, open-hearted, open-minded. Okay. Now, let's do a couple of other things around this Mars trine Uranus. Just a quick reminder, a trine is a 120-degree relationship between the planets, and that evokes an ease and a flow of the energy between the two. So Mars and its action and Uranus and its aha, epiphany sort of energy, awakening energy, are working in concert with one another. Remember, though, that a trine can be a place of a little bit of laziness where, you know, we're, we're, we think we're moving well and the energy is, you know, moving where so then we we sort of stop trying or stop you know uh stretching a little bit so we have to have the courage today here we go that word again courage today to change or to face the changes ahead for us we probably already know what they are right it's already ringling in my ear what it is that's changing and what direction i'm heading and this triggers our need to move out of our comfort zones to stretch and to grow and to evolve. We don't do any of that if we don't move a little bit outside of our comfort zones. And you don't have to move all the way outside of your comfort zone all at once for you fixed signs. You Taurians, you and you uh, Scorpios or Leos, you don't have to, and Aquarians, you don't have to do it all at once. But take a little step at a time to move outside of your comfort zone so that you can see what more is possible when you do this. And again, 
taking calculated risks that are designed to liberate you from something or to free you to move in a new direction. And that might mean you have to let go of something. You might have to let go of a relationship. You might have to maybe change jobs. You might have to, you know, let go of a cherished idea of what it was that forward. Now, we also have a minor an aspect that I I think of most astrologers will tell you it's minor, but I feel like right now with the number of things that are changing and transforming that the quincunx or in sun is in an inconjunct today with Chiron. So the sun in Virgo looking at the details, being a little bit picky, maybe a perfectionistic streak going on versus Chiron in the sign of Aries, which wants self-sufficiency and uh, individuation and is Mars ruled here and wants to take action and move forward. No more of this, you know, perfectionistic nitpicky stuff. It wants to take and zoom, right? Um, I think, and the bottom line, what this really brings us to is a confidence being either shaken to the core or boosted, depending on how you want to look at this. So some people who are have have experienced losses this summer or deep changes may feel their confidence is shaken. And others of you who have embraced maybe the changes that are being presented to you feel more confident to keep moving forward. So here we have, we're tasked a bit with kind of looking at where it is that we have these perfectionistic tendencies. Where are we waiting? Where are we holding ourselves in check, waiting for that perfect moment when maybe it is in the now, right? Perfection is in the now and or perfection tendencies keeping you inhibited from actually going out and expressing yourself, right? Maybe you feel like, oh, if I just take one more class, then I'll be perfect right? Or if I just do, if I just write one more paragraph, or if I just re-edit this entire book, then it'll be perfect, and then I can launch it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which keeps you in this loop of not expressing your individuality in the world, not doing what it is that your heart really wants you to do. So there's a little bit of this ideal today of looking at how confident are you in what you're doing, and if you're not confident, what is it that is keeping you back? What is inhibiting you? Because the opportunity with a with a quincunx or an inconjunct, it is, by the way, a 150 degree angle between the planets, which puts them in alien territory from one another. So, for example, here the sun in Virgo is not in resonance at all with Chiron and Aries. They seem to be, you know, going in different directions. So what it tells us is that we personally have to do something. We have to adapt or we have to sacrifice some, you know, sacred cows here in order to be able to move through this painful, this possibly painful experience of not having enough confidence and or um, having had something that's, you know, shaken you to your core and you having to rebuild and re-energize and then launch once more. So a couple of different things here going on. I think it's all good, right? These, this particular, you know, the sun will move to five degrees of Virgo tomorrow, then six degrees, then seven. So, you know, it's going to move on from this aspect with Chiron. But I think what it does, well, then Mercury comes in and fills that void for us. Thank you very much. Uh, so for the next, let's say, week, we may be in this space of reevaluating maybe um, what is our relative confidence level? And if you're not feeling confident and sure of yourself, why? Right? Why? Now, that brings me to the next little thing going on today. And that is Mercury in a pretty scritchy, challenging aspect to the planet Saturn. And, you know, Mercury today is at the end of Leo. And Saturn is retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. And it's only retrograde now for another few weeks. And in, in, in September, it, he is going to turn back to forward motion. So here's our last final opportunity of this time period of this retrograde to really look at where are the blocks in our lives, 
right? So for example, let's go back to the sun in conjunct Chiron, where maybe something has shaken your, your courage, or maybe your confidence, or you're holding yourself back for some reason. This energy of Mercury in a, a, a challenge to Saturn is going to have us taking a look at what's going on in our minds, right? What is the uh, conversation that's going on up here? So what are you telling yourself about yourself? What are you telling yourself about your abilities? What are you telling yourself about how people react to you or if people will accept you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Mercury and Saturn, they come together and the high side of this energy is you really get to see where it is that you are blocked. And is it in your mind, right? Is it what you're thinking? Is it your self-talk also linked to what you're thinking? And or is it time for you to find your voice and step up and out into the world and express yourself, right? And this is a great time then to finish up the old, whatever that old is that you've been working with. Remember through the summer as well, Saturn was in a conjunction, actually since the spring, since about April, Saturn was in a conjunction to the South Node and very much close to Pluto where something was being shaken up and almost destroyed in our lives in order for us to rebuild, right? And then almost immediately as that happens, Saturn turns retrograde. So we get the idea that it was a shift that we were having to make on our inner planes. So what have you shifted in your inner world? And what more is left to shift? And it may be something simple like just catching yourself in that moment of undermining your own confidence, of, um, you know, not being your own best friend and having to return to that space of being your own best friend. Uh, let's see. Gail, good morning. Christine says, yes, she's in Sweden. It's hot today. Woohoo. Um, she has a day off. She's been out in nature by the sea. That's awesome. Gail says, good morning from Pennsylvania. Ashley Imbernone, good morning to you. And uh, so thank you all for joining us this morning. It's really great to see you all. And there is any questions, by the way, for anything that we've been talking about so far this morning, anybody struggling with something that they want to talk about, please type that in there for me so I can see that. And while I'm waiting for you guys to, you know, do that, if you have questions, let me bring up the Pleiadian Earth energy for today, which is the beginning of the new 260 day cycle. It is uh, sort of a new year, if you will, right? The years are not quite what we would normally think of as 365 days. This is more like your spiritual new year where everything comes to a point again of beginning and then begins to work outward again in that cycle of growth and expansion. So today's universal energy is the one which is initiating energy. Interesting, considering we're still a couple of days away from the new moon. But today we have a good day for starting something. And I would say today's a good day for starting something. Then you pause tomorrow. And then on Friday, you put the next steps out after the new moon. The new moon does occur fairly early in the morning, at least for me, fairly early even for you all on the East Coast. And uh, so maybe making a run at starting something or maybe getting clear on a direction that you want to take, but then remembering that void of course moon that we entertain for the whole of the day tomorrow. And then the next day, the new moon, right? Today's Wednesday, then there's Thursday, then Friday, new moon. Okay. So good for starting something. And then the earth energy of the day is being energy. And in the Mayan calendar, this was Emish. And Emish was the, the great crocodile or alligator that was the creatrix of the universe. So here, and she was the great mother, right? The alligator was the great mother. And it was nurturing energy. It was creative energy. The cosmological egg. Uh, she gave birth to the cosmological egg, which birthed the universe. And I mean, there's this is a pretty complex myth. And how did human beings come to be out of all of that? The you know the Big Bang, if you will, or the 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 cosmological uh, beginnings of things. So we also see then with the beginning of the calendar round here on Earth, it is also about starting new things, right? Getting a grip on where do I want to go? What more is possible? And how can I connect with that? And then in 
of course, the more negative expression, we can become overly needy or reactionary or overly critical and perfectionistic and nitpicky. So we want, that sounds sort of Virgo-ish, doesn't it? So we want to be careful that we don't get into those more negative energies, that we want to express the more positive energies of beginnings. But remember, we're still at the close of that moon phase. So maybe it's um, the idea and the plan, the pause, and then the action. Okay, so idea and plan, pausing for the day tomorrow, and then Friday taking action in uh, the real world, the, the focused forward action. Here we go. Oh, hold on. Oh, I thought that was Sorry, I thought that was from Michelle Good, and I was going to tell us, Michelle Gay, I mean, and I was going to tell you how she's doing. I haven't heard from her in a couple of days. Uh, I know she was struggling a bit with headaches and just, you know, the after effects of having brain surgery. Uh, I don't know if she listens to us in the morning, but I'm going to check in with her today since I just thought she was checking in with me. But uh, And then I'll bring you an update on her, and I'll also check in with Ginger and see how she's doing for today. Uh, and hopefully we get some good news, right? Because now we are tapped into the Good News Network. And I also want to remind everybody that I've, you have a, an invitation to share all of the good news or any good news story that you come up with uh, over the next we're just going to keep doing this. We're going to do the good news because I want us to be able to focus on what's good, what's possible, what's beautiful going on in our world. And actually, one of our viewers this morning, a newer viewer, uh, Jan Landry, shared me a story this morning that I'm going to read to you. Apparently, there had been a very bad, a tragic even accident on the Atchafalaya Highway or something over in Louisiana. And a person who was a witness to the accident posted this yesterday to the news station uh, in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. And here's what he says, or she, I'm not sure if it's a he or she. Uh, the wreck on the Atchafalaya, the one of the worst I've ever seen, I was right there when it happened. I won't get into what happened out of respect for the families involved, but I will say this. With the news outlets telling us there's a race war and cops are evil, that didn't exist yesterday. Nobody cared what race, religion, or job description someone was. Everybody was helping everybody. Some of the truck drivers opened up their trailers for the children to get out of the rain. People were walking up and down the bridge with cases of water handing them out to people. People who had access to their vehicles opened them up to other people to charge their phones so they could contact their families. Truck drivers were sharing their blankets and bedding to the few that got hurt. There were people trying to comfort others who didn't speak English. It didn't matter where someone was from, what color they were, or whose God they believed in. The only thing that mattered was that everyone was okay. And I just love that kind of story. And I, you know, I know that as humans, we have this great ability to come together when there is common suffering and when there is common need we are so good at forgetting all those barriers all of those different things about one another we don't care if we're black white pink or purple or if we are muslim christian or jew we don't care right in that moment we expect express the best of humanity and here it is, another example of the best of humanity being expressed. And I really want to say to everybody, what we need to do is remember that in if we can do that in the worst of times, then we can also do that on a daily basis, just embracing our life and everyone in it as a beautiful part of the divine. And that story just, gosh, I just love that kind of story, but I wish that kind of story was happening all the time, irregardless of the accidents, right? Irregardless of, you know, whatever major disruptions occur, reaching out to one another and living that high, uh, high um, perspective, perception, perspective with all people all the time. That is what my wish is for this world, for sure. Uh, another good news story that I saw this morning in Indonesia, two teen girls use their native, use a native tree species to cure rats of breast cancer. 
And it doesn't really say in this article how old the girls are, but they look to me like maybe they're 16, 17 years old. Um, and here's the story. Two Indonesian high school students used local lore of a plant's medicinal properties in their own bid to develop a cure for cancer. The girls who attend uh, Polanka Raya State High School in central Kalimantan um, presented their inspiring evidence last month at the World Invention Creativity event in Seoul, South Korea. And essentially, as this goes on, it says what they found was extraordinary. Not only is it needed by the central Kalimantan people, but Indonesia and even the world, said the governor, as he reported in a translated article. Although the results using the rat was, were authentic, Professor Dr. Aru Sudoyo, the chairperson of the Indonesian Cancer Foundation, has reminded the public that clinical trials using human patients is a very long and unpredictable process using evidence-based medicine. But still, there's now this excitement that breast cancer has possibly a cure. And it certainly worked with the rats. And now uh, there is the possibility of more money flooding in. Uh, for research to be done on this. My high hope here is that big pharma doesn't get it and take it and hold on to it and run the prices up, that this remains a pr something that is available to everyone in a really good way. And one last story, and I think I closed it out before I actually got to the story, but uh, I saw this morning a story where Leonardo DiCaprio donated <sighs> something like $5 million to the fighting of the fires in Indonesia. And, I'm not Indonesia, I'm sorry, in the Amazon. And I was looking at the article about Indonesia while I'm looking for this other article about <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe it's in the U.S. news. Um, I don't see where it is. I, maybe it came to me in my email this morning. That could be a possibility. Ah, there it is. Leonardo DiCaprio launches a $5 million emergency fund to help combat Amazon rainforest fires. And if you want to read more, you can go to the goodnewsnetwork.net. Um, I believe that's the website, goodnewsnetwork.net. And you can take a look at the stories that they have there and share them widely right? Share the stories, share the good news. And if like Jan, who shared a good news story, and the other day somebody else shared a good news story, please do so. And we can just send that around through our community, elevating everybody and their perceptions of what is going on in the world. And trust me when I say we need it as we move into 2020. Rebecca, good morning to you. She says, does the universal earth energies go from sunrise to sunrise or by a specific time? I don't remember that exactly right. Sunrise to sunrise. So the energy begins with the rising of the sun and then goes on to the rising of the next sun. So again, another natural cycle involved instead of our artificial cycle with uh, clocks that tell us it's time to get up or a calendar that tells us it's a day to go to work. So I love that aspect of this particular calendar as well. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful story, isn't it? Um, Latricia, ah, love that story. Love it, love it. Heather, good morning. Love a good feel, good story. We do too. And Latricia, yes, free our plants from pharma, indeed. Um, Lynn, good morning. There really is so much good news, but you may not find it in the regular media. Thanks for sharing. Um, I'm doing a practice a friend shared with me to write three appreciations each day and to journal on a positive experience from the last 24 hours. I love that. I love that. Um, you know, that's like um, the people that do like gratitude uh, journaling where and and used to be like you would see people go on a 90 day gratitude journaling um, experience where every day they would be journaling about what they were grateful for or they would be in a Facebook group and everybody would share one thing that they are grateful for that day. And it creates this snowball effect, of course, of gratitude, which, you know, leads to more good news, I think, right? So great, great, Lynn. And, you know, let us know how you do with that. And uh, I, again, invite you to share us, share with us any of your positive experiences that you've been having. Uh, Latricia says, agreed. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. Um, 
anything else people have either i'm getting better at talking fast or we just don't have as much to talk about <laughs> because it's only 8 34 my time so that means we've gone through the entire day of astrological uh, uh, aspects and things that i wanted to talk about i'm just reading through here to make sure that i didn't skip something um, no, I think we went through everything today. Isn't it fun how things are sort of intertwined when, you know, one thing I find when I sit down in the morning and I do this is that there's such great coherence in some of the things that are happening on the planet. You know what? I didn't look at the human design of the day, but I think I looked at that this morning and nothing jumped out at me. Uh, we are in the last day today of the week of the sun at gate 59 and the earth at gate 55. And we move tomorrow into a new um, human design week with the gate uh, 40, the place of the sun, and 37, the gate of the earth. 40 and 37 are really positive energies. It links our divine will to our emotional self, right? So if you look at a human design chart, do I have one sitting here this morning? Nope. Maybe I do. Ah, I do. Here we go. If I can get to it. So the new channel that will be um, it activated is this one right here. Between the will center and the emotional center. So if you see this pink line here, <clears throat> the pink highlighter, right here is where we have the gate 40 on the, on the will center and the gate 37 down here on the emotional center. So it links our divine will and our emotions. So it kind of gives you this clue that whatever you're using your willpower on should be engaged by also your emotional energy. And we'll talk more about that as we move into tomorrow. But the gate 37, just to tell you, is the gate of harmony and the gate of serenity and the gate of peace and or not, right? Everything in your human design chart is an or not. Um, this is mood energy and the mood is based on, uh, you know, what energy is going on in your own life and how you're feeling at any given moment and how that connects up. So tomorrow you're going to see this chart change as we suddenly have access to a divine will and or the will center. So for about seven eighths of you out there who do not have access to divine will defined in your chart. Now, let me let me say this again. Let me reframe that because you all have all of the human design. But if you don't have it consistent, it means that your will center is open and you may constantly tap into other people's use of will energy and endure and persevere through things that you really don't need to because you have it open. Now, you're def now is a good time to be looking at what is my will focused on? What have I been using my will for? Is it creating more harmony in my life or is it disrupting my life? Because if it's disrupting your life and you're using your will incorrectly, that's the heart center in your human design. It is the center that links up our heart and our circulatory system, which means that all of those different things that can happen there with our hearts and strokes and high blood pressures and anxieties all can be triggered with using this energy incorrectly. So we'll want to have a really good conversation around how to use that correctly uh, as we move into tomorrow. I think it'll be a good day for us to do that tomorrow too, because we'll be in the void of course moon. There's really won't be any new energies for us to talk about until, you know, for later in the day, as I look tomorrow, the only big news is yeah, Mercury's move into Virgo tomorrow, completing our stellium. So we'll talk more about all of that in the morning. All right, one last check here to see if anybody had any questions. Oh, gosh, people were saying things. Holy cow. Um, Rebecca, nice. My moon is at gate 37. There you have it, right? Your moon at 37 already takes you into a quiet space and into wanting to create that harmony and that serenity in your life. You're actually driven in your life to come to that balance and that peace and that harmony. It's also a gate of friendship. So friends have a, a part to play in your life and helping you become more emotionally um, peaceful. They can also be the um, mode through which things get upset and <laughs> create moods in your life too. Um, Rebecca says, 
She's looking forward to hearing that tomorrow. Latricia, how do you close it? How do I close what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, how do you close? Are you talking about how? Okay, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a little confused. So Latricia, if you're still with us, tell me what you mean so I can answer that question. Lynn says, picked a card for us today. Um, believing in magic. True magic is abounding in my life. And that's from the Gateway Oracle by Denise Lynn. Awesome. And Lynn says, I'll see if I can post the picture and info on the page. And if you can't, post it to me and I'll post it for you. Because again, I'm never sure what Facebook is doing on my page and what they're allowing other people to post and what they're not. The Will Center. Ah, Latricia. Okay, gotcha. I thought that might be what you me meant, but I wasn't sure. So what her question is, is when you have, when, I'm going to show you a chart. When you have these open centers, what defines them? That would be the correct vocabulary to use because it's, I, I can tell you that it's an open center because it's white, but this one doesn't mean that it's a closed center because it's colored in. It is just a defined center. So we have undefined white centers and we have defined uh, colored in centers. If you have an undefined center, an open center or a white center, it can become defined or colored in by the energies of other people around you. So for example, in your family, like your spouse or your kids, they may have the opposite end of a channel that completes it for you. They may have access to an entire channel which, com which completes it for you. Um, or you may just be out and about, you know, in the workplace or in the grocery store. And when you feel those different feelings of connection, particularly in this channel, it is where you're clicking into place, where that channel is being completed for you. Now, the other way this happens is when planets transit. So, for example, anybody who has an open gate 40 where there's nothing sitting at the gate 40 on the will center. So right here. This gate right here would be empty. And if that's empty starting tomorrow, the sun is going to be sitting there and it completes it for you. So that opens up a pathway for you of expressing your energy in a new way. But you have to remember it's temporary, right? It's only going to last for the five or six days that the sun is sitting at that gate and then it passes out of existence and you you have to remember your own human design energy so that you don't get caught up in expressing energy all of the time that isn't your own energy. Now, this happens all the time on a quantum level, right? This is literally a study in quantum physics and because we don't know, right? We're wandering through, even today, sitting here, my human design is affecting your human design. Your human designs are affecting my human designs because energetically, we're all intertwined. And the energies between us don't notice the difference that I'm sitting here in Northwest Washington and you guys might be scattered throughout the world and indeed you are, right? It doesn't notice that. It just says we're all energetically linked right now as if by magic, looking at uh, Lynn's card here, believing in the magic because true magic is that we are all interconnected. We all have all of this human design and we can all at any time tap into what's happening on the planet, but you have to remember your own human design so that you don't consistently express energy that isn't your own. So I know that's the long way round of answering that question, Latricia. So let me know if that helps or hurts <laughs> or hinders or confuses you. And I will be happy to straighten that out for you. Um, because, you know, human design is, it's our gateway into the gene keys. And I think of human design and the gene keys as how we are really here to live the truth of our authentic life and energetically, right? Because we're all sort of conditioned by society, by our culture, uh, by our parents, um, by how we grew up, what, you know, where we were in the country. Um, and that conditioning then we send, we send out ourselves, we send our kids out into the world, having been influenced by all of this conditioning that may or may not be true and authentic for them. And if that's the case, then we've set them up sort of for, um, you know, growth opportunities, let's say, or for challenges. And it's not that we mean to do harm. It's not that at all. It's just that we haven't been aware or conscious 
of what our own energy is or of the energy of the beings that we've brought into the planet. And now is our opportunity to get wise, right? To gain this wisdom about what it is um, that we're doing. And as we gain that wisdom and that insight, it becomes a path for us allowing our children to be growing and developing in the way that they were meant to. And for us to be able to see where it is that we can bring more consciousness to our own growth and evolution. So it's really kind of a, a unique uh, way for us to look at something. Heather, good morning. She says, what is something that Virgos really appreciate when celebrating themselves? It's my partner's birthday tomorrow, and I'm curious about what would be meaningful to him. Um, Virgos are great analyzers, and they're also great at being grounded. They are great healers, right? There's a lot of healing energy possible with uh, Virgo, but Virgo is also ruled by the planet Mercury, and Mercury loves intellectual pursuits, right? So there's maybe the possibility of an intellectual book, uh, that's something that he hasn't read before, maybe something that opens up his mind, uh, maybe doing some kind of, uh, in some way, serving him uh, in something that he would like to have done. Um, you know, uh, sometimes, like for just little tiny example, my husband this morning made the bed. Well, he makes the bed maybe once a week for me sometimes, but today it was like I'm running late, even though I'd gotten up so early, and it was just great to have that not, you know, that little thing checked off. So in maybe there's something in some way that you could serve him or gift him a card in some way that says, hey, I, I'll be your partner in helping you do something that, you know, you've been wanting to do. That's always a good one for Virgos too. Uh, Latricia, I need to study my own chart indeed. Indeed. And Christine, I need to also to study my own chart and learn about this. Yes, indeed. There is a lot of self-study that can be done here in human design. Okay. Uh, I think, I hope, uh, Heather, that helped you. And uh, if you have any other questions, let me know here. Um, in the meantime, what else can I bring up tomorrow? If you all, if you are listening and you are a member of the uh, Living Astrology Academy, then tomorrow is webinar day and we are going to be talking about what's coming up for September energetically. So I always let in, let you in on the secrets of the month coming ahead of what I do for everybody in general. So tomorrow at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Pacific time, excuse me, 7 p.m. East Coast time, um, I will post the link again today in the Living Astrology Academy Facebook page, the secret group and let you know how to connect and so far it looks like september is a very good month although uh there's a couple of little kind of interesting things happening for september kind of the handwriting on the wall kind of things that you'll want to know about uh so that is it for me heather says sounds wonderful thank you you're welcome asa good morning to you joining us a little bit late but you'll be able to pick up the uh, broadcast right after I am done here. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day. And remember, get those good news stories, share them with me, share them with your friends, post them on your Facebook page or Instagram or your wherever. And let's just keep spreading the good news. And we have enough bad news. We don't need any more of that, right? All right. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow morning. Bye for now.